Back on Newsmaker Saturday, it may not be the trial of the century, but in Arizona it has become a big, big deal. The trial of the so-called doomsday mom, Lori Vallow. She's accused of killing her two children, Joshua, J.J. Vallow, and Tylee Ryan. Our investigator, Justin Lum, has spent considerable time in the last four years covering this case, and now the trial going on in Boise, Idaho. Justin joins us now on Newsmaker Saturday. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, John. Um, it's an odyssey, and one thing has changed since you took on this story four years ago. You become a father, so how hard was it for you to watch some of this evidence in court, which was very graphic? I appreciate you asking that because uh, definitely it was... It was excruciating to look at these photos played slide by slide. Graphic evidence of Lori Vallow's children. J.J. Vallow was seven years old. We saw a photo of him earlier in court of him wearing his red pajamas. The last time he was seen. Mm -hmm. Photo that she took and recovered from her iCloud account. And then we see autopsy photos of J.J. wearing those same pajamas. And it is very graphic. He was bound with duct tape around his arms and his head. And then we're shown JJ without the duct tape. And you recognize his face. You know this little boy and you've seen him. How so did the jury was, react that to that? That was extremely hard. Oh, the, the jury was definitely having the most emotional moment they had had throughout this process at, at the time last week. Um, and you could see that they were holding, trying to hold back the tears. They have a service to do and they were you know trying to take notes and you saw some jurors that were staring for a reaction at Lori Vallow especially when they we wanted to get a read they on wanted her. to see how she would react especially when we were seeing the remains of her daughter Tylee her own daughter that we could not recognize because of the condition her remains were found in I mean she charred, was burned charred bones and, and burnt flesh uh, in a shallow grave just just terrible to we see. need to we need to push your special because I think if if you're trying to catch up this this has got so many tentacles it's really hard to follow it murder money and the end of days the Lori Vallow story uh, you can get it on our Fox 10 YouTube page you can go scan the QR code on your screen right now and it'll take you there and it's a really good primer for people trying to kind of catch up with with how this all went down how would you describe if you were if you were just talking to somebody casually and they said what was this Lori Vallow thing all about where would you even start yeah, I really don't know where you start. You could go many different routes, but yes, our title for, for the special we worked on, Murder, Money, and the End of Days, um, really paints a picture and shows you the foundation of how this all started in the Valley. I mean, really so much evidence is right here uh, from the shooting in July of 2019 when Lori's fourth husband was shot and killed um, by her brother. And then you dig into and you find out that her husband was really laying out all this evidence against his wife and, and sounding the alarm and asking for help. He believed that she really had an issue evolving with her religious beliefs at the time. So you have the this alleged, is Lori's husband this is at Lori's the time. Lori's estranged husband at the time, Charles Vallow. Charles Vallow. And he lays out her, her beliefs. And, and no one seemed to listen at the time because there was nothing very, very alarming going on. And if you're an officer looking at him, you might not believe him. You may think he sounded crazy. And now that all this has happened, it really, I mean, wow. And he ends up dead. And he ends up shot. And How killed. many people, I'm trying to total it up. How many people end up dead in this story? Uh, right now, there are five people. There are two spouses, Charles Vallow and then Tammy Daybell, who is the, the wife of Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow's now husband. Um, it, that's something you have to absorb, too. You have two dead spouses and you have two dead kids. And then you have her brother who died of natural causes. But this all happens within a span of months. It's incredible. These five people. That so died. Lori, the long and short of it is Lori Vallow meets Chad Daybell. She's been reading him. He is kind of a is it doomsday stuff that he, he's he, fixated on. Yeah, he was a fictional author who wrote about doomsday events and end, the of, end days? of the world, the end of days. He believed he was a visionary. He said that he had near death experiences. Um, and so he wrote many books, all fictional, but she had become a fan and had read them years ago before she met him. Were these only popular within kind of the LDS world or were, did he have a wider audience? I, I think that there was a niche, a certain audience he had. Um, he was a part of this group or form called Another Voice of Warning. And these people were very fixated on preparing for the end of days. And so at this conference where they meet in St. George, Utah, October 2018, 
They become fascinated with each other, and according to investigators, uh, Chad tells Lori that they were married in another life. Um, and this, this idea seems to attract her, and they start this alleged affair, because at the time, they're both married to two, two people. Um, and this happens just months before Charles Vallow is shot and killed here in Chandler. He, he, he found out about this. Chad Dayapel pursued Lori Vallow, you believe? Uh, it, it's hard to tell. They both meet at this conference. Um, what we learned last week is that she helped that day s sell his books to people and stood at his, his stand, his table, and they hit it off. Um, and uh, the story goes that as she was driving back with certain friends, uh, she wanted them to look up scriptures about this figure named James the Less. The story is that Chad allegedly told her that in his past life he was this apostle to Jesus Christ named James the Less, and that she was married to him and her name was Elena. So he sets this storyline for her, according to investigators. And, and this becomes this full-on religious um, mission that they are going to be leading the 144,000 when the end of days come. She is on trial now for murdering her two children. Yeah. Death penalty is off the table because of a mistake made by the prosecution in filing. It, it was a matter of getting evidence in, disclosing um, a lot of discovery to the defense on a certain deadline, and the court found that uh, they could sanction them, a discovery sanction, uh, either dismissing the case or taking the death penalty off the table, and you're not going to dismiss this case. So that's what ended up happening. So Lori Vallow, what is, the, what is the prosecution's contention of why she needed to kill her own two children? It, 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 there's no logic to it, but what the prosecution laid out in opening statements was money, power, and sex. And you see this, this money element with the alleged life insurance motive for both of them. Chad Daybell both made $400,000 in life insurance off after his wife's death. Uh, Lori wanted to be the beneficiary of her estranged husband, Charles, but he changed the beneficiary before he was killed because he, he had these huge concerns. That was a $1 million life insurance policy. She's accused of collecting social security benefits on behalf of her children, uh, Tylee and JJ. Those are thousands of dollars each month. So that's just the money aspect alone, the power from what Chad was allegedly teaching her, that she was this powerful being and that she was a god and all these things. That's where the power element comes into play. And the sex is this affair as they had started this relationship while they're both supposed to be happily married and had a family. The prosecution has laid that out and now they're breaking down this, this argument with, with the, the testimony they have. The, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gets brought up in this and they must really rebuff any connection between these people and the church, right? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people who follow this case that are members of the church and they are adamant that these are not beliefs right. that they carry, that they have been taught. Um, I, it, from what we've learned throughout this case, it started with, you know, these mainstream beliefs that Chad had, and he, he added something to it. It definitely went, it's an offshoot. It's an offshoot thing. It's unorthodox. Um, there's nothing in that members learn about zombies and dark spirits and yeah. light spirits right. and, and how you assess people like that. That, that, that doesn't, that just doesn't exist there. So when those two meet, it's kind of nitroglycerin. The two, the two of them, it's combustible, the whole thing. This was a definite spark right away. And, and Chad Daybell will go on trial as well for murder, but he does face a death penalty. Yeah, he does face a death penalty. He has first degree murder charges in the deaths uh, connected to J.J. Tiley and Tammy. We have learned that Tammy his, his died. His former wife. His, his, his wife at the time when she died all of a sudden in her sleep of, now we know it's asphyxiation and he's accused of murdering her. We did not know the cause of her death, and we still don't know the causes uh, for J.J. and Tylee, just how they were Do found. Do we know the relationship now between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell in this combustible relationship? Are they both cutting and running to save their hide, so to speak? Is one of them hanging on and the other one's cutting and running? I mean, if Lori, if Lori Vallow is convicted, it's quite possible, is it not, that she could end up testifying against Chad Daybell. Yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, she is and maybe facing, to get a lesser sentence. She's facing up to life in prison right now. Um, it looks like what the defense is doing is that they're going to paint her as this good mother who was influenced 
by Chad Daybell. They're going to put it on him. And, and that her brother was involved. He's named a co-conspirator, but he's dead. He can't testify. He can't stand trial. Um, so, but they ha also have alibis for her, that she was not in these physical locations when these three people died. But all they have to do is prove a conspiracy, that she was a part of a, a plan to murder these three victims. Is that a heavy lift? Well, it, it, that's a good question. With all of the cell phone data and the technology now, we have seen some disturbing things, and it comes at the hand of Chandler Police testifying in court last week, showing the texts uh, between her and Chad, between her and her inner circle, as they were allegedly trying to um, cast out these dark spirits. There was an agenda there that they were talking about the death of her husband, Charles, that it was going to happen. She was trying to predict that. That may show a conspiracy there and how she never reported her kids missing. I mean, how do you not say one word to police as police are the ones that are putting out information on your missing children and you won't cooperate? She yeah, never asked. That had to raise red flags That was a huge red flag. Okay, so for people watching this at this point, what should they be looking for if they're watching the trial, if they're kind of keeping an eye on what's happening? What's the next shoe to drop? Well, it's going to be more of this evidence. Today we saw a lot of the financial footprint. We've seen the spiritual beliefs. I'm interested to see who else they bring to the stand. Um, her sister is on the list as a witness, someone who had a visitation with her in jail virtually. What, what is going to be said on that call? Um, definitely, th there's a lot more witnesses to be brought to the stand by the prosecution. She wasn't even, uh, for a while, deemed fit mentally to stand trial, right? Yeah, she's been deemed incompetent and then labeled competent. And there's been this back and forth over the past couple of years. Has Have any of her friends po or family posited a theory as to why she went down this road if she did? Well, her family, really, her immediate family hasn't really been around for this. They have stayed to themselves. They haven't really, um, said much after the kids were found. I think that was a very sobering thing to see because for a while they had defended her and said she was a great mom and that's when the kids were missing. Mm -hmm. Now you don't hear too much because the reality is that two children were found dead in that backyard and there's also another dead spouse that was asphyxiated and there's no there's no logical explanation for that she was yeah. a healthy 49 year old so i think a lot of people are looking at lori and how is she going to react to all this we have rarely seen emotion from her or That's remorse yeah uh justin thank you and an, another reminder murder money and the end of days the lori vallow story you can find it on our fox 10 phoenix youtube page or you can scan the qr code on your screen that will take you right there justin lum great work Good to see you. Appreciate you, John. Okay.